my friend, and welcome to Fear Into Faith. This is our Miracle Signs and Wonders segment. And whoo, hang on for the ride today. We are interviewing a man named Mandre Collins. And his story is about how he stood in the gap between a lifeless baby and a faithless wife. Let me tell you just a little bit about this man. Mandre is from Dallas, Texas. He is a project manager, but also he leads and pastors over a home church. He is the proud owner of Kingdom Hoops, and we're going to hear about that. That the it's an organization that gives opportunities back to the community. And something that you would want to know about him is he is a father of ten. So Madre, <laughs> awesome. I am so excited to have yes. you here Thank you. with us. Thank you for agreeing to be part of this project for submitting your story. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I'm I'm hanging on for the ride with the whole audience because I don't yeah. really actually know you. We just met today, and I don't know very much about your story, so I'm super intrigued. Let's just start there. Let's start yeah. on this day where yeah. you stood in the gap. So start us off just you know before maybe things got into crisis. Yeah. Start us at the beginning Absolutely. of this day. So it was just a normal day, right? So. Um, Can I ask you really quick? Yeah. What child was this? How many? So, so this is Anthem. So this okay. is baby Anthem Bliss Collins. Um, she is our second youngest. So um, number so, nine. So she's number nine. So you were experienced with pregnancy babies, all the thing by then. Okay. Yes. Number yes. Nine. So so all that, right? So, um, but with baby Anthem particularly, right? Um, she's a very fun and outgoing type of girl, right? Love it. And so it kind of came to this point um, in our life to where she started to become a little bit more lethargic, um, mm -hmm. to where the facial expressions weren't there. And how old was she? And so she wasn't even one yet. Um, so she was she was she was still very young. Um, she still is, but um, right around that time where she started to kind of lose her kind of emotions, if you will, and a loss of appetite, um, that's when me and Carissa, my wife, we knew something was up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we kind of went to my son's basketball game and thinking that she would kind of come back a little bit. Nothing happened. So we left and had dinner after the game. So what kind of what kind of symptoms? When you say lethargic, what were so, you noticing about her? So there was just again, I mean, just you see this uppity type girl just kind of come down. So the, the, she didn't want to play, mm. right? So that's one. And of the you first thought symptoms. maybe, well, she's just tired today exactly. or something. Maybe but, she's so tired. So how long was it going on? So it went on for about a day, day and a half, mm -hmm. right? Which was too long. Yeah. Because yeah. With her type of DNA, she's a firecracker, right? <laughs> you can't you can't keep her still. Yeah, I um, have one of those. <laughs> and so, for this to go on that long, we knew that there was something going yeah. on, yeah. and uh, we didn't really know exactly what it was. And so, uh, fast forward a little bit into this, as we're sitting at the restaurant, and she was really starting to lose um, her the 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 ability to hold her neck up. Oh, to where wow. she was stuck in this position. So now oh we're like, gosh. something's yeah, really going something's on. Something's really wrong. And so Carissa's like, I'm going to take her. I stayed back with the other little kids. Um, so Carissa took her and rushed her to the ER um, to figure out what was going on. It wasn't long before I got a phone call from Carissa saying, I need you here. I need you here. And she's crying historically, right? So before she could finish her sentence, I hung up and I was on my way. Um, so I left the kids with our mother-in-law who was in town at the time. Yeah. So I... I jetted up to the hospital, and when I got there, um, they had my baby girl laying on a bed with a neck brace on. And she's hooked up to pretty much every machine that you can possibly think of. Um, and again, she's in the state in which I had last seen her, where she's still not moving. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so... What did you feel it was in one that of those moment when you saw her hooked up with all those machines? That there was nothing I could do. Helpless. I was completely helpless. Yeah. And Carissa was completely helpless. And, and seeing her in, in the pain that she was in as a mother, she couldn't yeah. really keep it in. That was hard as well. So I'm yeah. juggling both right now. And the only thing that we could really do was cry out to God. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, we would hook up and we would just pray over our baby girl that God would just move into her. Were they telling you what was wrong with her, why there was a neck brace? Exactly. And I think one of the things that they were able to detect was that she had a UTI, right? Okay. And the UTI uh, infection was so bad that it sent her body into a sepsis state. <clears throat> so she was completely out of it. Um, and so they had to uh, work with her very quickly and put fluids back into her body. You know, they did x-ray after x-ray, you name it. Um, but they weren't coming up with anything else outside of just a UTI. And this is crazy because, I mean, I, 
I've had, I have three girls, right? And we've had a couple of things with UTIs, but never would I extreme. ever know that it could go that bad. I mean, I am grateful to hear your story because I'm thinking parents need to know that they need to react quicker when there's things Absolutely. going on because I had no idea that it could go that fast Absolutely. in a child. We didn't either. Yeah. You know, we, we've, we've had little experiences here and there, um, but they have never been to this extreme. Yeah. Um, we knew that this was really something that was different, just particularly to her. And even doing the test, the doctors were doing all the tests, it didn't make sense as to why all these other things were happening mm -hmm. to her body and why it was shutting down like yeah. that. And so they were able to move her out into the PICU, which is the, the pediatric ICU, mm -hmm. um, the unit, um, where she was, she was there for two weeks. Um, and during that entire duration, I never left her side. Wow. And so this is where things start to take off um, for the story. And so on day, day two, when she hit the, the floor in the, in the PICU, um, they kind of had, they, she kind of came back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. She kind of had a little bit more life to her, to where Carissa was there with me and she picked her up and she held her and she started to feed her with a bottle, Yeah. right? And she started to eat just a little bit. And it wasn't long before she blacked out totally. Wow. Where she's just completely out, right? And Carissa is shaking uncontrollably. And I walk over and I grab baby girl and I pick her up and put her on the table for the doctors to start working on her. And I can remember Carissa looking at me and saying, Mandre, tell me this is not how it ends. And so she gets up and she comes behind me and she's grabbing the back of my shirt and she's got her face in my shirt. And I'm on this side over here, I'm looking at my baby girl, and that's where I get the whole line where this is where I have to stand in the gap wow. between a lifeless baby and a faithless wife. And um, it was one, I, I, can, I vaguely remember turning around and looking at my wife who was out of it, she was shaking and all these things, and it was like nothing else existed, it was just me and her. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I need you to get it together. We are a couple, we are a family, we practice faith out of season. Oh, hold but, on. That is so good. You have to say that again. You I practice. said we are a family and we practice faith out of season. You practice faith out of season. Out of season. Tell me more what you mean by that. Yeah, That's and so powerful. out of season is those times where things are not happening, mm -hmm. where the storms are not brewing right in our lives. And, yeah. and we operate in God's word and we, we pray as a family, right? And, it's, and, and so we do that out of season. And that's really a basketball mindset for me because when the season comes, it's time to play. Yeah, because you're a basketball coach. Right? Yes, correct. Wow. And so you, you, whatever I do in the offseason prepares me for when it does come. And mm -hmm. so now's not the time to crumble. It's time to play. Yeah. It's time to activate the very thing that we've been working on mm -hmm. for so long. Wow. And so that is being so able to, inspiring. I love that. I love that. The faith out of season. Yes. I feel like that's going to hit a lot of people. Yes. Because we don't think about that. I don't think about it. It's easy to have faith when it's easy. But there you it's, go. You, you're practicing that faith. You're prepared. So that when you get on the battlefield, you're prepared just like a soldier getting his weapon That's or just it. like the basketball guy practicing his drills, he's ready to go. That's it. I wow. mean, it's a lot like putting the armor of God on, right? Yeah, Ephesians we, 6, we were talking about go. that today. So when we talk about putting the armor of God on yeah. in itself, right, we don't do it just for the battle. We do it in preparation for the battle. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when the battle comes, I've already, I'm already guarded, Yeah. right? Yeah. It's not one of those things so where now that the storm and stuff is gone, let me go put my clothes on. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We've got to be ready before it even comes. Amen. We're going to pause you really quick. We're going to go to commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to find out what did he say to his wife next and what happened. We'll be right back. Very good. Well, welcome back. We are here with Mandre, and he just left us hanging where he's in the hospital. He's in the pediatric ICU with his baby girl, not quite one years old. He's got his wife crumbling, and his baby is now just blacked out. That's where we left off. Yeah. What a cliffhanger moment to leave off <laughs> no doubt. and so no doubt keep going yeah so um like in I that said, moment you were saying to her i need you to i need you to have faith right now yeah i need you to have faith and in that moment she says mandra i can't and it as and hard I as i can understand that you know you're telling me this story and i'm thinking i don't even think i could stand up if i was in her shoes yeah yeah it's got to be hard right but in my mind i'm like somebody has to be strong here yeah, yeah. right and as I was communicating with my wife, hey, I need you to have faith. She says, Mandra, I can't, right? I told her, I said, okay, well, you need to go spend some time with God. 
Go find a room over to the side and just spend some time with God. And that's what she did. She left. Wow. She left and she went on. So it was just me and baby girl. And as I continued to just pray for baby girl, as she was sitting there, they were able to bring her back. And they were like, we don't even know what happened. We don't know why she just blacked out, oh. right? And so the first thing was that we got to send her back to do an MRI to figure out what happened, if there's something that triggered in the brain. Yeah. And so I told him, I said, wherever she goes, I go. And so they put her on the bed and they wheeled her out to the MRI room. And right when they got to the door, they shut the door in my face. They said, sorry, you can't go this far. And that was one of the moments in my life, one of them, where I have felt very alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I did next was really a, a pivotal thing because I went and found a room off to the side, like a little consultation room. And I can, I can remember seeing this room with a little lamp, right, a little phone um, on the table and a, and, a, and, a, and a couch. And it's dark. And so I walk in this room and I shut the door behind me and I lock it. Mm -hmm. and, and I just fell to my knees and I began to cry out for God. It was... It was truly a Jacob moment for me. Like, I'm not leaving until you bless me. Mm, wow. And so I'm clinging to God with everything I have. And yeah. it was never a matter of whether or not he was working. I just wanted to know what you were up to. Wow. That was it. That's what I asked God. I'm not questioning whether or not you're working yeah. right now. Amen. But what are you doing? Yeah. I just want to know. Yeah. And it's like I, I asked it. It wasn't like I asked to see the whole sun. I just wanted to see a ray a day. Mm, yeah, it's good. Give me a ray a day. So right? Yeah. And eventually I'll see, I'll get to the sun. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and that was my mindset. And, and, and just sitting in silence after I had just cried out and pleaded out to God, I just sat in silence in this room and God began to speak to me. And he says, Mandre, I love her more than you ever love her. Ooh. And not only that, she'll be fine, but you got to walk through the process. And that was enough for me to be able to get up on my feet and wipe the tears off my eyes. Wow. And I remember coming out of the room and running down the hallway looking at every room, because I didn't really know where my wife went. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at every yeah. room, right? <laughs> and so I finally get to the room to where she is, and she's sitting on the floor in tears next to the chaplain of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so he's there to console her and speak to her. And so I ran over and I just kind of hugged her and I said, I just gotta tell you what God just said to me. One, he loves our daughter more than we ever will. And two, she's gonna be fine, mm -hmm. but we gotta walk through the process. And so I said, from now on, wherever my baby girl is, it will be a room of faith wherever she's at. Wow. And I told her, I said, if you don't have it, you can't be there. Wow. And she stood up and we hugged it out. And she says, man, Dre, I totally get it. I understand. And that, that moment she left and she went home. She went home and she got, and we just talk about a battlefield. She went to war in the spirit over her baby girl, unlike anything else. Wow. Um, and so as I stayed and they brought baby girl back, they brought her back to her room after the MRI, um, I was there to just kind of meet them. And so um, just sitting in that room with her, it was completely different. Because mm. while she had went through and the fact that she's there and all the things that she's tied to and even the unknowns, I had nothing but a perfect peace. Wow. Amen. Knowing that the one who created her, who loves her more than anything, is in control and says that she'll be all right. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Amen. So I will, I will gladly enjoy this ride. I don't know how long we're going to be here. Yeah. But that was the type of confidence in, that I had in God at that point in time. Yeah. Right? And it's truly transitioned for the rest of my life. You talk about a faith builder. Right. My faith has never been stronger. Mm. Right. Um, than it was that day. Wow. And so when I look back at that entire thing, when it talks about standing in the gap uh, for your family. Yeah. Right. That also projected me into standing in the gap for other people. Amen. So, so when right. I hear stories about what people can't do or they're struggling and I don't see the end, I'm like, you don't even have a clue. Mm how good our God is, yeah. how strong he is, yeah. how much in control he is, Amen. right? It truly does change everything. Well, you know, they say that authority comes from experience. Amen. So God's given you that authority now to stand in the gap for other people. That's beautiful. Yes. So you got to tell us, you already said she was there for two weeks. So this yeah. was day two. Where are we? I'm all this and I'm <laughs> on day two, right? <laughs> what so, happened in those next two weeks? Yeah, so over the next two weeks, the rays came out. 
Mm. Right? We begin to see little improvement by little improvement every single day. Um, and, and here's one of the things of um, a testimony that, I, that, that has always been one of those things that where I, I just, I love to talk about is that every single day that she was there, the doctors would circle up and they would huddle, right? Before they even went in to her room and they would talk about what was the plan for the day. Mm -hmm. And it was very experimental because they didn't really know. Wow. So they would try this, let's try this, let's try this, right? And in my mind, I'm like, man, my baby is not a guinea pig. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so one of the things I would ask the doctors is, hey, the next time that you guys meet, I want to sit in. Wow. I want to be a part. And they said, man, that's not something that we normally do. I said, can you please ask somebody of greater authority to see if I can sit in? Yeah. Right. And so they came back and they said, you know, good news. We'll let you sit in. Right. And I said, I get it. You talk about every child on this floor. Yeah. I'm not really interested in hearing their stories. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I know that they're going through things, but I'm particularly asking, what is it that's going on with my daughter and what is your plan and yeah. why? Mm -hmm. And so as I sat in these meetings for two, three, four days, I didn't say a word. I stood back and I just listened. Mm. But on the fifth day, when they would, when we huddled up and they were getting ready to develop a plan, I, I raised my hand and I said, do you mind if I ask a question? And they allowed me to ask a question. I said, we've been doing this for like three or four days, right? And we don't know necessarily what's working and what's not. I said, has anybody asked God? And they looked at me like I had four eyes. <laughs> And I said, the reason that I asked that is because every single day that you walk into my daughter's room, I pray that God guides your hands and that he guides your feet before you even touch her. And I truly believe that whoever is walking in that room, that God is, he is orchestrating the hands and the feet to be able to perform what needs to be done so that he gets glory for it. Mm, amen. And so in asking that question, I didn't really get an answer. Mm -hmm. Right. But the thing behind it is that I would hope that there would be this thought provoking thing that the next time that they either walked into this room or they went home later that night yeah. or the next patient that they get, that they're seeking God mm -hmm. in terms of what needs to be done with this child. Yeah. And so that was a, that was a really good moment that I had. And I would spend nights just sitting in the room and talking. And that is literally the moment we're going to have to pause. <laughs> awesome. I'm because good. we have another commercial <laughs> no break. Doubt. We'll be right back after this. All right. Well, we are back in the studio here with Mandre. And whew, what a story he is telling us about standing in the gap between his wife who had lost her faith and his baby girl who was struggling, who had blacked out, had all these things that the doctors couldn't explain. And that's where you pretty much left us yeah. hanging, <laughs> is you've now talked to the doctors. You asked the yeah. doctors if they had prayed. Where we at? And yeah. so now we're on about day, what, seven yeah, we're now? Probably, yeah, day seven. We're moving along now, right? And, and this is about the time, like, after having these conversations with the doctors, right, not really getting an answer, but really putting them in a space to really think about that, right? Yeah. And, and not even necessarily knowing where their relationship is with the Lord, mm -hmm. but the simple fact that, that rays are happening to show up all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and they still don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Improvement yeah. is, on, is on the way. Um, and, and here comes my wife. Right. She so now wife is built up. Remember, because the last she time we talked home, about yep, it, we sent yep. mom home. <laughs> but mom's back now. Mom's yeah. a completely different character. Right. She's coming in. She's praying. She's storm mm -hmm. walking the hospital. Amen. Right. And every single morning um, um, before, you know, when she would she would be there early in the morning. She would go home at night to be with the kids. But in the morning when we were together, we would pray and we would worship mm, amen. over her bed. Amen. Right. Yeah. We would literally play worship music and so we would good. worship and we mm -hmm. would sing. And it was so nice on the doctors that if they had if there was their time to come in during that time, they stayed outside and they waited. Wow. Um, but again, the atmosphere. Yeah. 
is what was so important for mm -hmm. me, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times in life, when we're really struggling with things, the reality is, is that has you, have you set the atmosphere? Yes, yeah, so right. Good. To mm -hmm. welcome in worship, right? Yeah. To welcome in His presence, to mm -hmm. to allow Him to be able to come in and do what He needs to do, right? Because a lot of things, I, I, like I'm a I'm a pretty tall guy, right? <laughs> yes, you are. And, and so <laughs> at the end of this tip is the extent of what Mandrake can do, mm -hmm. but be. Beyond that is the impossible, and that's where God works best. Amen. And that is one of the things that was so evident for me in this story because, mm. because with my baby girl, I'm not a doctor. There's nothing that I can do for her. Yeah. Same with my wife. There's nothing that we can do. The only thing that you could do is call the manufacturer who created her to be the fixer. <laughs> that's good. And that was the mission for me. Yeah. I, I knew nothing else. Yeah. And so every single day as she continued to get better, I remember looking at my wife and I said, hey, we carried her in, but she's walking out. Amen. She was walking before we came in. She's walking out, yeah. right? Because we serve a God who makes all things new, yeah. right? And so even as I'm, I'm speaking in this bold type of confidence, right, the situation didn't look like it. Mm. So I'm calling those things that be not as they are. Yes. And so th that was, I'm telling you, like, this is where the story was so profound because I saw God's goodness in the midst of a mess. Yes, good. And so the doctors would continue to come back with these diagnoses about, you know, they thought at one point that she had um, a kidney failure. Her, she had to get a kidney replacement. And they were getting ready to book a flight and send her out to another hospital to get it replaced. Now, they, now here's the thing. The, the hospital that they were actually sending her to called the, the hospital that she was in back and said, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Right. And they said, go ahead and send us a, send us over what you have, what you see as an abnormality or whatever. Yeah. And so they were able to look at it and review. They said, there's nothing wrong with her kidney. We were this close from jumping on the flight. Wow. And there was nothing wrong wow. with her kidney. Right. Wow. Now, whether or not they had a, dis, a misdiagnosis or not. I'll leave that up to them, but I, I'm going to say that that's God's way of healing her. Amen. Right? Yeah. Um, and so, again, uh, that was just another ray that God would just show her and say, Mandre, I'm working. I'm working. Mm -hmm. And as she continued to get better and she had uh, pneumonia in her lungs, right? Um, and so about a couple of days in, they would, they would do uh, x-ray after every single day, and eventually it, it cleared up. Wow. Right. So now that's gone. Mm -hmm. And so we're at a point now to where now they're moving her out of the PICU and they're putting her in a regular room. Yeah. And at this stage, it's it's all about physical therapy. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about helping her get strength back in her body yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and helping her stand up and be able to walk again, do all the things she was doing before. Um, and and so the physical therapist came into the room and she'd sit, sit baby girl down and, and she would just kind of fall over. So she didn't really have the strength in her core to really sit up and all those things. Wow. So this went on for like two days where the physical therapist tried to work with her. And she was like, we can't send her home. We can't send her home like this. And so on the third day, physical therapy, the therapist came in, same kind of thing, still lethargic a little bit, and, but she left. And I remember holding hands with her and saying, baby girl, by the power of God, you are going to walk. You are going to get stronger. You are going to be better than you were before. Mm -hmm. And I remember picking her up and she'd fall back down, picking her up and she'd fall back down. On the third time I picked her up and she stood up. And so we moved over to the couch to where she can kind of walk it down, right? And she was real finicky at first. But she started to gain strength. Mm. This was happening in the same day, third day, right? Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence to that, by no means. Yeah. And so we, we opened the door to the room, and I kind of walked her. I started holding her hands, and she was starting to walk up and down the, the, um, the hallways. Wow. And it got to a point to where I felt like she was getting pretty strong in her legs, and she was walking more confidently and smiling a little bit. Oh, yay. And so I kind of stood her up, mm -hmm. and I backed away. And she walked to me on her own. Mm. The thing about this piece is that right around the corner was the physical therapist that just left. She walked around and saw her walking to me. 
when she left, she couldn't stand up in the same day. And she says, well, looks like you're going home. Wow. <laughs> and so I called my wife and I said, we're going home. I said, she's walking. And it just hit me because I remembered saying, we carried her in, but she's walking out. And so we have on video the day that we were released yeah. and she's holding my hand and she's walking out of the hospital. So and good. we praise the Lord because that was the day I looked up when I walked out and I saw the sun mm. that I had been asking for yeah. all along. A little bit of a wink. Yes, Well, absolutely. I know that she's here. We she have is. Anthem here. And you're talking about her walking. And so uh, <laughs> I think we get to let her walk on over to you. I'm sure everybody watching is like, we've got to see this cute little girl. Anthem. Come here, Anthem. Oh, she's so gorgeous. <sighs> Hi. Awesome. You say hi. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Can you look right at the cameras right there? Look at this one. Or this one right here? Here, about this one. Can you wave? You wave at that camera. Say hi. There you go. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. I want to ask you so, you're a dad of 10. Yes. And uh, just so y'all know, we are going to interview the mom. We, she has a whole other miracle story, and we're going to have an episode that has all 10 kids. So don't worry, we're going to show you that. But I want to know how did this strengthen the faith as a family or strengthen Absolutely. your unity? You know, nine, nine kids in, um, we have, a, we have a, a monument on our wall at home. It's a, it's, a, it's a monument to Yahweh, and it captures every single miracle that he's ever done in our family. Oh, I love it. And it's so important that, you know, when we are struggling and we're going through things, that we are reminded of the Amen. things that God has done. Yeah. And there's a lot of our children, right, that, that, that don't remember some of the miracles mm. that have been updated um, onto the, to the mirror. What a great idea. And that is inspiring. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> and so the goal behind that is not, not only did it just build our faith to be able to stand in the gap yeah. um, for our children, um, but even when you tell this story, it's a message of hope for everybody. Yeah. And that's what they need to be able to cling to. Yeah. And, and, the, and the real thing is that the real goal is that when she, when she grows up, we'll be able to point back to that. <laughs> and we can remind her of what God did in her life so at an early age. Did you know that? You're a message of hope. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a little smile there. That's it. Well, thank you for being here. Anthem. Absolutely. Anthem, look. Thanks for being here. Isn't You're so thank pretty. You? Thank you for sharing that story. Absolutely. It's just incredible. And I love all of the things that you were sharing about your faith. And I'm just so grateful to have been introduced to you and your thank wife you and so your much. beautiful family. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching today. I just want to say to you that I just pray right now in Jesus' name that your faith will be strengthened so mm. that when you go to those seasons, yeah. just like this family, you'll be able to stand on that faith in the same way that they did. So I just pray that over you, that the Lord would bless you with greater measures of faith in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Amen.